You're watching Tennessee Titans today. I am Tom Downey, and we are just 450 subs away from the 5K mark. Can we get there? I think we can. Remember, the more subscribers, the more Titans videos you guys get. We'll be here all season long. Help producer Jack feed his cats. He runs our Titans channel. Help us get there. Hit that big red button and subscribe right now for more free Titans vids. Today's video is look at some of the top winners and losers from the final preseason game, the Titans against the Arizona Cardinals. Yes, Tennessee won that game in a bit of a thriller, 26-23. The Titans came back with a little fourth quarter comeback action. But the overall win-loss doesn't matter that much. Yeah, Tennessee went 2-1 in the postseason. That's awesome. We and the organization cares a lot more about certain individual performances, how various guys fared a lot more than, ooh, we won, our backups beat your backups. That doesn't matter that much. Let's begin with one of the most exciting players on this Titans team. That is quarterback Malik Willis. Maybe his best game so far in the preseason. Look, there were more ups and downs again for Willis. The highs are so tantalizing at 15 of 23 through the air, 131 passing yards, one TD, one interception. Also chipped in 79 rushing yards. He had that 50-yard run, which was incredible. I mean, there are only a handful of QBs who can do that in the NFL. That makes it all intriguing, tantalizing. Logan Woodside barely played in this one. He also took four sacks. He threw an interception. Willis is still kind of what he's been this entire time. The highs are up here. Uh, the, the, the dynamic playmaking, the untapped talent, and the traits are there. The consistency is not. I mean, you saw earlier in the preseason Mike Vrabel saying we want him to throw the ball. He didn't throw the ball that more. He did. He threw it 23 times. I think that's a big sign for him. There's a lot of intrigue with Willis. I don't believe the consistency yet is all the way there. Now, we're getting the roster cuts. That's coming up in a couple of days. We'll have that video for you guys. Make sure you're subscribed. But will Malik Willis be quarterback two this year? Y for yes or N for no? Sound off. Make your predictions for me in the comment section. Let's go to the first round pick then. Traylon Burks, who left the game briefly with a wrist injury. He came back and caught his first touchdown pass of the year. Three Catches 33 yards, one score on only three targets. So every time they looked at him, it was a completion. It was a first down or, and more. I was overall pretty impressed uh, with Burks in that game. I am not nearly as concerned as some of the, well, it's the fantasy people who are so worried about Burks who, eh, you know, they, they focus on other stuff than fantasy. So I guess it's fine in the end. So make your predictions for me. How many touchdown catches this year, or actually touchdowns total, give him a reverse how many touchdowns for Traylon Burks this season this is going to be our pinned comment on today's show so if an ad break comes here on YouTube awesome timing take advantage of it head down there and let me know sticking on offense for our fourth of seven win or third of seven winners hashtag math Nicholas Petit Friere GM John Robinson confirmed that Petit Friere won the starting right tackle job the third round rookie out of Ohio State comes in and beats out a second-round rookie last year in Dylan Raidens. We will talk about Raidens more in the losers category, but hat tip to MPF. I do think he was a better player at Ohio State on the right side. He had issues on the left side, but he's playing the right side. Uh, I maybe would have preferred Raidens from the level of investment, but Tennessee took a third-round pick at offensive tackle. They didn't trust Raidens. Paying off for them now is Nicholas Petit-Friere has won that right tackle job. David Anitti next up here, the UDFA from Houston, who I thought flashed a little bit for Houston last year and continued a pretty strong preseason. Three sacks in the first two games, no tackles, no sacks today, but he did break up two passes. And I think oftentimes batted balls line of scrimmage, those PBUs for defenders that, that aren't corners or safeties or linebackers, those, those front guys are often undervalued because if you're getting your hand on the football and breaking it up, that's just as good as your corner breaking up a pass. So I like the knee. I think he has pushed very hard and might just make this Titans 53-man roster when it's all said and done. So who's your biggest Titan winner or winners against the Cardinals? Who do you think impressed you the most in that particular game? Sound off for me right now in the comments section. 
Let's go to cornerback Ugo Amadi next up here. The most recent addition, oh, one of them, I should say, uh, traded twice already this preseason. He flashed in this game. Uh, for the Titans. He had a couple uh, couple good third down stops. I liked what I saw out of Amadi. He's still fighting hard to make that roster. Only one uh, tackle, but he did have two pass breakups, by the way. I think he looked pretty good. Can play some nickel, can play some safety. Adds to a very deep room already in the secondary. Rashad Weaver is next up here, the edge rusher. Now, his stat sheet was pretty solid. But I think even more impactful than what just the seven tackles was. Had a pass breakup, had a quarterback hits, got some pressures as well. He was a third-round pick. I think it was – let me double-check. Maybe it was a fourth-round pick. I can't remember off the top of my head. But Weaver was a fourth-round pick last year out of pit. Didn't do much of anything last year. Had just, I think, two tackles in total. I think you have a much, much larger and more impactful role in a good way this year for Tennessee. Speaking of good things, how about this t-shirt combo pack from our friends over at Fanatics? Get yours today, chatsports.com slash Titans combo. That link will be in the comments section and in the description of today's show. It is impossible to find officially licensed gear from the NFL. It's also expensive. This is 30 bucks for both of them. Not individual, for both. That is a fantastic value. I believe it is the best deal Fanatics ever offers. It's still available on sale Lots of sizes, but supply is always limited. Chatsports.com slash Titans combo. Let's talk, I can't believe I'm saying this, punters. You, those of you who have watched Chat Sports for a long time know uh, I, don't, I don't love punters that much. They're just, eh, they're punters. They're, they're people, I guess. Seven punts in this game for Ryan Stonehouse, a massive figure, right? Averaged almost 50 yards per punt. Did have two touchbacks. That was a bit of a red flag from that standpoint there. I had a, a couple inside the 20, offered a pretty big bomb from that standpoint there. Overall, I was pretty impressed with what Stonehouse offered. Holds were pretty good as well. We'll have to keep an eye on what Tennessee chooses to do at punter. Is it going to be Ryan Stonehouse? Is it going to be Brett Kern? He kind of had some comments, knowing it might be his last time with Titans. Stonehouse was the only punter in that game. That feels significant from that standpoint. So pick a punter for me. RS for Ryan Stonehouse. We forgot the tight parts. It's all good, though. Or BK for Brett Kern. So you got to be listening. RS for Ryan Stonehouse. BK for Brett Kern. Let's talk losers then. Uh, we we got to talk losers, right? That's how it works. Uh, Dylan Raiden's offensive tackle. He didn't win the right tackle job. That is now, let's be honest here, a pretty massive disappointment for your 2021 second round pick to barely play as a rookie and then lose out at the starting job where you wanted to win last year, didn't win it, and now he's getting reps at guard because your third round pick this year beat him out for the job. And make no mistake, if it came down to a tie, Tennessee was going to go with Raidens. They invested more in him than they did in, in, in NPF. For him to not win the job was a pretty clear sign he didn't earn it at all. I am worried about him long term. I don't want to call him a bust yet, but disappointment is the one word I would use there. I got some more losers coming up here, but first, uh, what is who is your biggest Titans loser against the Cardinals? Let me know in the comments section. Raidens, I, I am including in those kind of a overall preseason thing, but sound off in the comment section. This should not come as a huge surprise, my friends, but the backup offensive line. It looked like a backup offensive line. That's how it is, by the way, for every single NFL team. Do not freak out when your backup line struggles against backup edgers. That is, you can watch any game in the NFL. If they blitz five, if they do a stunt, the old line's like, what is this? I've never seen a stunt in my life. There's no chemistry. They're often shuffling guys around. So, yeah, it looked bad. They allowed that four sacks from Lake Willis, which we can blame the QB. Some sacks are at least partially a quarterback stat. I didn't love the ground game. You know, Julius, outside of outside of Willis's scrambles, like, you know, Trent Canada under four yards per carry. Hassan Haskins was nine for 11. Chestnut had three yards per carry. Wasn't great. We can blame the offensive line. It's the backups. That's why if you suffer a lot of injuries to your offensive line, whoever you are, your season's cooked. One last loser. I feel bad about going again with a 2021 draft pick, but Des Fitzpatrick. The stat line looks not a disaster. Two catches, 23 yards. Also a brutal drop that would have been six. 
Dez is fighting for a roster spot here. And the last thing impression he's going to have is, I ah, dropped what would have been the game-winning score, or at least the go-ahead score. Like, that's, that's bad. So I, I don't know if it's Patrick's going to make this team, but that drop, I think, is going to really linger in the minds of the Tennessee Titans decision-makers.